Dear Mr. Starrick, men hired, strike tomorrow. Disraeli's death will stall Corrupt Practices Act indefinitely. Gladstone will be far more pliable. May the father, etc., etc., be. So Starrick's got his finger in politics, has he? I need to enter the Sinopian Club and find out who B is. Tread delicately around Parliament. As if I don't usually. Your indiscretion at the Bank of England caused British currency to nearly collapse. Nearly is the operative word. Speaking of collapses, what of the key you found that unlocks very little? Henry took it for research. I am confident that the vault is ours. Nearly ours, Evie. Nearly. Please tell me again where we are going. I found a letter from the Prince Consort among Lucy Thorne's research, marked with the same insignia as your key, dated 1847. 1847? The same year the Prince began renovations to Buckingham Palace. You think he added a vault for the Shroud? And since there is no map of the palace with the room marked Secret Vault. Your Highness, may I present Miss Evie Fry. Miss Fry, Maharaja Dulip Singh. A pleasure, Your Highness. My friend, the plans you asked for have been removed. Removed? By whom? Crawford Starrick, or someone employed by him. Yes, I thought you might recognize the name. I know where they are, but it is heavily guarded. That part will not be a problem. I thought not. We're going to need a plan. I can provide a distraction for the guards while you find a safe way inside. Oh, really? <laughs> for you, Evie? Certainly. Well, once I'm inside, I'll find someone who knows where the papers are stored. And we will be back on the train. Be careful. Nothing here. Oh, what what is she doing here? Oh, 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 I have her in my sight. She won't escape.
No. Looks like I have to ask someone where the plans are. I'd swear, miss. I don't know where they've taken him. Taken who? The man. Dressed like you. The guards dragged him off. Henry, the plans you stole, where are they? I don't know anything about that. The plans. The mission. You're some of Clara's children. They took Mr. Henry. We couldn't stop them. I bit one of them good, though. They dragged him off in a red carriage. They won't get far, though. One wheel looked like it was about ready to fall off. You can see the cart tracks. It looks so wobbly-like. run off the road. They must be driving quickly. They're knocking people over too. And destruction of public property. I must be on the right track. saw them dragging someone out of the carriage after the wheel fell off. They said he hit his head. Not sure why they needed to take him to the church, but that's where they went. I could have sworn I'd locked this gate. This is supposed to be locked. Bloody urchins opened it again, no doubt. You're not getting out of here alive.
Pretty good. Wouldn't be surprised if it took a while. The roof is here. here alive. <laughs> <laughs> Send someone to move the architectural plans. Do you have them? Did they hurt you? I'm fine. Let's go. What about the plans? The plans are lost! Oh! Evie, I'm sorry! Just concentrate on escaping, please. Get Miss Nightingale to look at that. I must find the vault before Starek secures the shroud. We'll talk to the Maharaja again. I will talk to the Maharaja. You will get your head looked at. I'm sorry my capture hasn't done your plans. You'd be safer on the train. Even if you find the vault, you can't just walk into Buckingham Palace alone. I won't be alone. I'll see you back at the train, Mr. Green. done this time <laughs> the newspapers are all over Tupany's murder and if that weren't enough someone has stolen the currency printing plates was that also Jacob's doing I doubt it now no one trusts the bank or England's currency there there will be inflation riots manufacturing will jump to America for the cheap labor in short Britain is done for Jacob you've really put your foot in it now what if I smuggle the plates back into the bank? Huh? Well, it'd certainly help. Better yet, it would call into question the stories on Tupany's murder, which would restore confidence in the economy. That's settled then. Britain lives to see another day. Oh, and if it's not too much trouble, would you mind destroying any counterfeit notes you come across so they don't circulate? 
Of course. It really is very good of you to help. Follow me. The counterfeit money is being spent nearby. Well, if you can call it counterfeit. With those printing plates, it's nearly impossible to tell the real notes from the fake ones. Mr. Abilene. If this gets out... Well, I've said this already. When people don't trust their currency, and we're already seeing riots... Mr. Abilene. Jacobs managed to shatter the entire economy. Father was He acts in haste and repents not at all. Not at all. We just walked right in on the chaos. <laughs> now to sneak these back into the bank.
I hope she's not in any real trouble. Get the intruder! What's this then? Stop her! You're not allowed here! You'll be Bye, baby, Bunty! There, as if they were never taken. Well, the London papers are running the story of how it was all a hoax. No more riots. Faith in the bank restored. Finally, I might get a quiet night on patrol. Miss Fry, I can't thank you enough. Glad we've averted catastrophe, Sergeant. Although it's Jacob who should be thanking me. What's your game? The Russians thought they had us cut off from our own lives. Well, if it isn't my dear old chum, Mr. Disraeli. Now, Prime Minister, which of your friends is about to stab you in the back? The Corrupt Practices Bill is a vital step in reforming our government. If the majority party is allowed to dictate the results of contested elections, we can scarcely call ourselves free. If we yield up our rights bit by bit to the courts, we can scarcely call ourselves free, sir. This is so like you, Gladstone. You would rather throw your body upon the gears of progress than surrender one iota of power. By God, Disraeli, you are a fool. 
I'll not stand idly by and watch you drag parliamentary privilege through the muck. No, certainly not. You'd rather return us to the yoke of tyranny? Perhaps while we're at it, Mr. Gladstone, <laughs> we could repeal Magna Carta and return the crowd to the bloody stars. Right He's sick of it. Dead. Dead. It's it's on the street yeah. of the world crushing. Merely because I do not wish to see it's government time. Time. placed in the hands of judges, it's time. It's time. You it's time. make oh, these slanderous right. accusations, back, sir. I'll not stand for it. Then I shall obviate the requirement. Good evening, sir. Pleasure to meet you. B. B. My name's Herbert. Then why are you following the Prime Minister? It's just a job, sir. Some old bloke payment. Smug bastard. Well, I was born in Crawley, but that's by the by. Who are you working for? Oh, uh, I never got his name. Uh, old chap, big moustache, or some kind of uniform. Who's ours, maybe? What's his game? Please, he'll kill me. And a three-story drop will shatter your legs and send you to the workhouse. Difference is you can run from him. Tomorrow! Oh, my lads are going to attack the Prime Minister's carriage on the way to Parliament. Uh -huh. Perfect. Oh. of this who the devil are you prime minister i'm your new bodyguard jacob fry i wasn't informed of any new bodyguard who's your commanding officer let the boy speak dizzy <laughs> madam apologies but we've learned of a threat on your life and the met thought it best to move quickly threat what sort of threat <gasps> that sort if you excuse me a moment
here. What's all this? Not so fast, Your Excellency. about Gladstone, young man. I assure you, madam, Gladstone is innocent in this. But he tried to kill my husband. Well, we'll look into Gladstone. Perhaps you can help me with another inquiry, madam. A gentleman with ties to Parliament, older, wears cavalry uniforms and has a large moustache. You seem like a rough and ready sort of fellow, Mr. Fry. <laughs> well, yes, I am, actually. And are you familiar with the poorer districts of our city? Roughly. Wonderful. As it happens, I've been eager to tour the Devil's Acre. If you were to escort me, I'd be happy to assist you in your inquiry. That strikes me as a dangerous idea. Then it's settled. Come back here to Downing Street tomorrow night, eight o'clock sharp. Good day, Mr. Fry. But I... Good day, Mr. Fry. Madam? Mr. Fry. Ready to take the air? Devil's Acre should just be coming alive. I'm afraid I must cancel our engagement. The lawn is crawling with scandal-hunting journalists, and I simply cannot be seen in the company of someone so... I'll see them off. You follow along when it's clear. Yes, yes. Uh, be gentle, won't you? The press are notoriously touchy about any violence to their person. <laughs> I'll barely ruffle a hair on their heads. Shh, Desmond. But I'll be late for work. <laughs>
one man. Dizzy ought to keep you on to deal with the liberals. <laughs> Do you think it's a crime? Let's go. In the cart, it's the Prime Minister's wife. I really must not be seen here, Mr. Fry. Who's a good horse? You are. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah! what the Devil's Acre has to offer. Is your dog quite all right? Oh, Desmond's fine. He's just not over fond of strangers. Or cats. Oh, this gentleman is a... Oh, what was it? Yes. A costermonger. <laughs> Remarkable how the working class is occupied themselves, isn't it? Very industrious, I'm sure. Shall we go? That was the Eucharist. I'm so sorry. I have no earthly idea what you're talking about. <clears throat> Mrs. Disraeli. Everything all right? Oh, yes. I've just learned to whistle. Right. Gracious! I, I do believe we're being... Oh. Smuggers, lucky I'm trying to keep out. There he is! Finish him off! And we'll go for a trick! I am so sorry. It's not usually this excitable. Shall we see what awaits us deeper in the acre? Why, Mr. Fry? I do believe that man is drunk. I expect you're right, madam. I'm going to ask what he's having. Perhaps you'd let me recommend something instead. Oh, Mr. Fry. Look at those two. Uh, yes, they, uh, they seem to be, um... I've been married twice, Mr. Fry. I'm fully aware of what they're doing. God bless them. Oh, 
What sort of meat is that man selling? Best not to ask. Why? Is it something dreadful? <gasps> is it rat? I don't mean to be indelicate, given the present company, but another name for it is Bow Wow Mutton. Here we are. The old... So, this is a pint, is it? Huh? Remarkable. <sighs> nice doggy. <laughs> Good boy, Desmond. Hand over the mutt. You'll change your tune when me and my friends find you. Now then, Desmond, to get you back to your mistress, whom I've just left entirely unattended in one of London's most dangerous pubs. Well, if you never told your father how you felt about him, how was he supposed to know? I never thought of it that way. I suppose deep down we all just want to be loved. Just so. Mm. Here, have a sweetie. Oh, Desmond and Mr. Fry, I'd like you to meet... Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. John the Tosser. Charmed. I think we'd better get you home. Right you are, Mr. Fry. Come along, Desmond. <laughs> Well, well, if it isn't the dog walker. <laughs> now, let's not do something we'll regret. There's no way I'll miss him. That's the way. Walk on, go. and enlightening evening, Mr. Fry. No, thank you, madam. Perhaps now you might tell me about the man in the hussar's uniform. Quite right. Do you know where I might find him for a private conversation? I do indeed. He's in town now, as it happens, campaigning against the corrupt practices bill. Perhaps you could catch him in the Palace of Westminster. Oh, do be careful. The government could ill afford another scandal. I assure you, I'll be very discreet.
Your stop, madam. My stop? <laughs> How delightful. Thank you. Thank you for a splendid evening, Mr. Fry. I shall be sure to speak highly of you to Dizzy. <laughs> Oh, yes. What's this nonsense about needing a password to see Lord Cardigan today? Relax. I've got it in my pocket. Look sharp, men. Allow no one past unless I authorize them. Cardigan has gone too far this time. I've a mind to contact Scotland Yard myself. Come now, gentlemen. I thought us united in opposition against this perfidious law. Pardon me, gentlemen. Sergeant Freddie Aberline of Scotland Yard. Where might this scandalous activity be taking place? This is the sort of thing we've been talking about. Oh, yes, yes. It's a follow me, Sergeant, but discreetly, if you would. One doesn't like to be seen airing a fellow member of the intruder! I'll be very discreet. Usually I would be in disguise, but my clothes all fell into the Thames. One of my favorite disguises is a very ancient old lady, modeled after my mother. You'd be surprised how convincing I am. A tough old bird she was. Actually had a facial hair problem. We'd sell the hair for dolls. Please let me know if I'm speaking too much. I am prone to flights of fancy. Let me go! 
I beg you, just let me leave. Oh! <laughs> Don't kill me, please. I beg let you. Let me live. I've got an old mother needs taken care of. For the rook boy! Password. I won't lose you this time! Ready to shoot! Tell me who I am. I'm a member of parliament, you Propose the bill at this No password, no passage. Sir. Shame! Where would we have been at Balaclava? If we had turned our coats at the first sign of difficulty, lined against the wall, and shot! That's someone's here. We have visitors. Oh, shit. Balaclava should fall not on the gloried fields of Crimea, but to an assassin's blade in the very halls of power. Are you finished yet? Take your bow, knave, for you have managed what no Russian battery, what no Indian tiger could achieve. Claim your trophy, and may you choke on it. Yes, but do tell me more about Balaclava. Farewell. Farewell, dear Britannia! Your dawn shall be dimmer that the Earl of Cardigan sees it not. God save the Queen and the Eleventh Hussars! What a prick. Apart from the death squad on our tail, apart from that. Backup's on the way. Why are you pushing yourself so hard? It's not your job to fight Templars. I had this colleague. He was our boss's son. I didn't much care for him at the start. Everyone treated him like he was so bloody special. To me, 
He just wasn't invested in, in, in anything that didn't affect him personally. But I was wrong about him. He became my friend, put himself through hell, and he saved us all in the end. So I reckon, well, I can't apologize to him, but I can, I don't know, I can try and live up to his example. You are a good assassin. Holy jeez! Hello. It has been too long. Galena! I mean, I have not seen you since we blew up that lab in Paris. Uh, there were many explosions and you screamed like a baby. Bishop tells me Otzelberg is here. I will kill him for you. Super. Great news. Now, if you wouldn't mind keeping watch, I am going to lie down and die now. Rest. We have a big fight coming. Sean and Rebecca are safe for now, but we're still relying on you to find us that shroud.